Good day everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you are new to this channel, we would like you to do us the due diligence by subscribing to the channel, hitting the notification bell to get notified when we release new content. In today's video, we are going to be talking about creating good perspective views in D5 Render. Okay, so as you can see, we have our project here and we are going to be creating good perspective shots right away. Start creating views in D5. We'll actually start by hiding obstructions. So we are going to be hiding these two fences here. So we are going to be hiding this segment. We'll go under here to this tab here and switch it change from imported and go to object. Then we'll see the fence we've selected under this object and we are just going to click on this eye icon over here to just hide it. So we are going to do the same for this other fence and we are going to click hide. We're going to also do this here and click hide. The first thing I want to do is to go to this camera setting over here and just change it from 90 degrees to 75 degrees. And we are just going to, I don't think 75 is okay. One of my first principles of picking perspective is I try to make the sides around the building or the main building equal as possible. I make the building the center of the capture. That is, I make sure the main building is in the middle and I try to get equal amount of environment and equal amount of sky, also equal amount of this side portion and also this side portion. That is why I define as a balanced view. This view is still not the building. I don't feel it's getting uh, the most out of the main building. So I'm just going to go back to this setting and change this from 75 degrees to uh, let's use 70 degrees and see what it gives us. Not much. Let's reduce it to 65. And we'll see. Okay, oh, 65 is too much. Let's go back to 70. So I think 70 is all right. So I'm just going to click on this icon over here. Under this fly movement navigation tab, I'm just going to reduce this speed so I can get the view I want easily. So I'm just going to go down. I'm going to try and get more of the sky. And I'm going to type if it on my keyboard to automatically put a two-point perspective view. So after that, I'm just going to go to get more of the front of the building. And I think, uh, I think, okay, I think this is balanced. Okay, we'll just leave this like this and we're going to, see, okay. Now in this view, we are finished setting this view. We are now going to click on create new scene to save the view. Okay. Then I'm just going to click Ctrl S to just save the progress we've made on this project. Then I'm going to pick the next view. The next view I'm going to be picking is more like a pseudo elevation view. It's not really an elevation, but it's actually just going to capture the front of the building. So as you can see, we'll also follow the same principle. And we're just going to go to this object and we're going to unhide this fence over here because we actually need it. You can see how versatile and it kind of makes you very crafty while you're picking perspective views because you imported the fences as segments of their own. So I'm just going to unhide this fence here and I'm just going to try and pick a nice shot from this point of view. So I'm going to follow our principle by maintaining equal sides at all the four corners. And we're going to make this this image the center of focus. So we're just going to pick. And we're going to go here over here and reduce the speed again. So we can navigate slowly and be able to select our desired view. So this time around, I'm going to go here and increase this view range to 60, or rather reduce it to 60 degrees. Because we are not, we are just getting too much environment and I don't really want that so I'm just going to switch it up to get more of the building I'm going to take this down to get equal sides I'm also going to be you can also add this setting to help you go to um, display and add grid this grid will kind of help you get use the lines to actually get a very balanced perspective so it won't be that distorted so i think this is actually a good view so i'm just going to go down a bit and i'm going to pick this view and i'm going to add it to the scenes so as you can see we have picked two views the first one being this one and the second one being this one so the next view I'm going to pick is actually going to be similar to this first one and I'm going to just pick this other side. So I'm just going to 
go back to this one because I already have the desired angles I need and the desired view range I need. So to easily rotate it, I'm just going to go to this navigation tab over here and I'm going to click on orbit. This orbit will help you to move in a concentric manner. So I'm just going to click on this on one point of the image and just start rotating and just continue rotating. I can also just switch midway and switch it back to fly to be able to use the fly tool to actually move around freely. Then I'm going to go to objects and unhide this F1 as usual. But I'm also going to hide this fence too. And I'm going to hide this other building. That will be obstructing. If you notice something, I'm trying to navigate well, but it's actually g train and the view is actually looking kind of weird. So the thing that is causing this issue is the two-point perspective is still on. So to off it, I will just do F8. And now it's off, I can move freely as I want. And I'm going to pick this view. So in this view, of course, I want to capture a lot. I will slow down my movement as usual. And I want to capture a lot. Um, a lot of the front side of the building because that is where most of the beauty lies so I'm just going to go here going to zoom in here and go to this front part zoom here and go to this front aspect and I think this is a good perspective view let's look and see if it follows our principles just going to go down or rather sorry not our principles just some good principles I learned from someone so we're just going to pick it and yeah I think this is a good perspective view so now we have currently picked three views so the next view we're going to pick is actually an aerial view so to do that firstly I'm going to unhide all the fences and I'm going to type F8 to undo the two-point perspective. And I'm going to go to this navigation tab over here and increase the speed so I can move faster. Okay, then I'm just going to go. And also, I'm also going to unhide this uh, bakery small building over here. So I'm just going to go here and... So while picking an aerial view, I preferably go to camera. Under camera, I change this view range to 45 degrees. Now it's good like this, I'm just going to zoom out. I'm just going to try and make sure I capture the building while I capture a large portion or almost the whole environment. Now I'm just going to reduce this to about, or in rather increase it to about 55. So I'm just going to go here just to get the perspective-ish view. So I'm just going to go and we're going to click create new. So as you can see, this is how to create good perspective views using D5 Render. We'll be producing more subsequent videos on D5 Render software and exploring other aspects of it, including composition, materials, and so much more, even animation too. Please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, stay tuned for these videos because these videos will actually be very helpful, and also hit the notification bell to get notified once you release a new video. Thank you once again and have a nice day.